magandang magandang gabi po mga katipon na sa Pilipinas. Ito po ang ating katipunan na muling sumasa inyo mga tagapakinig upang uh, magbigay ng hal- mahalagang impormasyon, magbigay liwanag at higit sa lahat makinig sa inyo mga daing at kuro-kuro hinggil sa mga problemang pagtuloy na nagpapahirap sa ating kalagayan at kabuhayan. Sa susunod na oras sa uh, Uh, dalawang oras sa Matter of Fact, sisigapin po namin ipaliwanag ang iba-ibang bahagi ng ating ekonomiya at ang mga uh, mabibigat na local and international issues na may malaking epekto sa ating buhay at kinabukasan. Ito po ang inyong katipon na si Butch Valdez. Kasama ko po dito ang ating co-host na si Itos uh, Valdez. At ang iba pa natin mga katipon dito na uh, sila Vera Chibido, sila Roxanne Suba uh, mula sa Save the Nation Movement, Philippine LaRouche Society at ang partido politikal ng katipunan ng demokratikong Pilipino. Kami po dito ay nag sa inyo na makibahagi sa ating talakayan sa pagsusuri ng mga kasalukuyang problema at paghahanap ng uh, paukulang solusyon. Okay, uh, dito po sa ating programa, sa ating katipunan, sinisikap po natin makapagbigay ng bagong kaalaman sa ating mga tagapanood at uh, mga kasamahan po sa, sa ating katipunan. At uh, ngayong gabi, minarapat natin na uh, pag-usapan uh, ang uh, hindi madalas mapag-usapan sa mga ganitong klase mga programa. Ang tawag po natin dito, ito, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng Great Reset? Madalas po natin nababasa sa mga social media na magkakaroon ng Great Reset. Di ba po? At uh, ano pa mga uh, tinutukoy nila na yung uh, Green New Deal. Yeah, ng, tinatawag nila ng Green New Deal uh, uh, sa US. Sa US. United States na parang landmark uh, legislation. Uh, pag Green New Deal, ang ibig sabihin wholesale uh, change. Wholesale change papunta sa base sa environmental uh, right. changes na patulad. Ideology. I, I, isa po nga ideolohiya ito na nagsasabi uh, na kinakilangan na kalikasan ng mangunguna hmm. isa sa taularan hmm. na uh, uh, environment before development. Yan right. po ang uh, basic uh, thrust ng Green New Deal. Yeah. At uh, kanya po mal- malaki ang uh, ilaan na pupunta dapat ang Amerika sa mga tawag nilang sustainable energy sa solar, sa wind, at uh, tatanggalin po yung mga galing sa langis o uh, uh, sa nuclear. No? Coal, all of Coal, plants, lahat uh, po yun. Mga fossil fuels. Uh, pero ang, uh, ang pinagbabasihan po ng mga industriya sa buong mundo, hindi lang po sa Amerika, ay itong coal, oil, at uh, nuclear, yeah. no? tsaka geothermal, yeah. no? tsaka hydroelectric. Yan po ang uh, pinagbabasihan ng mga, ng mga enerhiya na, na nakasandal ang kaudlaran ng mga ban- iba-ibang bansa. Right. Pero itong mga, itong mga, tawag dito, itong, itong mga tumutulak nito sa Green, Green New Deal, Deal sa Great Reset ang gusto nila matanggal lahat itong klaseng uh, hmm. ano, at uh, pas pumasok daw tayo kinakailangan sa solar at sa wind hmm. uh, so ngayong gabi susubukan natin talakayin itong mga ito ano bang ibig sabihin ng Great Reset hmm. sino-sino ba ang, uh, ang nasa likuran nito at uh, kailan ba nagumpisa itong ganitong klaseng pag-iisip Right, and then uh, actually, we've been discussing this for the past yes, uh, <laughs> for the past year uh, since po nag lockdown. Kami lang po nag discuss ng mga ganito. And what's the intention? And what's the purpose? And what's what are the stories behind? Ano ba yung mga policies na na na, na, na nakikita natin uh, na pinapanggawang condition 
uh, para ano para kunyari uh, uh, yung mga yung mga international financial institutions hindi magpapayram ng pera kundi ma-implement tong mga polisiya sa gobyerno who is behind this who is telling them this is what they should do so ito yung mga to we will another show dedicated to that we are actually sa ang ating katipunan uh, are are pointing out sino yung talagang kalaban ng um, uh, hindi lang yung Pilipino but ang mga, ang mga citizens of the world. Sino talaga ang mga demonyong ito? Sino ang mga puno, di ba? Sino ang masterminds ng mga to? Kaya ang, uh, ang tawag natin sa kanila ay mga masasamang tao, hmm. uh, dahil ang kanilang, uh, ang kanilang pakay at nakikita natin ay uh, kalaban ang sangkatauhan. Yeah. They are against humanity. They are when when you are against development, na, and you favor so, the so-called uh, nature or uh, environment. What happens there is that you favor the environment, supposedly the environment, over human lives, mm. no? forgetting the fact that the human development the development of human beings hmm. no, has been uh, based on the enhancement hmm. of the capability of our environment right. to sustain more uh, human lives. In other words, kung naiintindihan niyo po yung sinasabi ko, hindi po, mag, mag, uh, hindi po magkalaban ang environment at saka ang buhay ng tao. Pero itong mga nandito sa uh, uh, Green New Deal tsaka mga environmentalists, parang ginagawa nilang kalaban. Sa aming pong paningin, ang tao may likas na kakayanan gamitin ang environment para makapagbigay ng mas malaking benepisyo mm -hmm. sa sangkatauhan. Hmm. At yung beneficium yun ay nagkakaroon ng kakayanan para pakainin ang mas maraming uh, tao sa mundo hmm. to increase uh, uh, the benefit uh, and the uh, population uh, potential population density yes. of the world using the creativity of man. Hmm. No? Hmm. At, uh, at ito po ang uh, pagkakaiba. Hmm. Ang ginagawa lang nila, sinasabi nila, <coughs> kailangan tanggalin ang development para hindi mamatay ang ating planeta. It is uh, that kind of ideology that is disrupting and destroying uh, the rest of the world right now. Right. So, they, again, uh, uh, kung nakita nyo po yung mga show mm -hmm. namin sa last Sunday, Sunday's previews, we went into this starting with the Great Reset, um, and then we went into population uh, uh, population control uh, um, uh, ideology. Sino bang ang nagumpisa ng mga to? Then we went into um, Malthusians. Sino ba yung mga to? Sino ba yung nagtatawag uh, calling for depopulating the world? We we discussed Bill Gates and COVID <coughs> and how it's related to this. Mm -hmm. This this uh, depopulation of the world. The, the 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 intention po ang gusto nilang mangyari. So gagawin nilang lahat. We we went into the philosophical basis. Sino ba yung nagumpisa nito mga pag-iisip the modern uh, depopulationists, the modern Malthusians. And uh, tonight we will continue that discussion because we believe uh, yung kalaban kung kung may kaaway ka Mm. Doon ka sa, doon mo itutok yung baril mo, hindi sa mga, sa baba ng mga soldiers, yung mga um, infantry. Kasi, hanapin mo yung general. Hanapin mo yung general. Uh -huh. Hanapin mo yung punot dulo nitong, uh -huh. nitong yung, yung uh -huh. tumor nung cancer. Yes, na? Yes. Kasi ito mga ibang uh, naniniwala sa pampaganda ng kalikasan, yes. pagpalinis, they are soldiers, but they are not given the real intention of what uh, uh, this environmentalists really yes. have in mind. Mm -hmm. no? uh, 
At sa patutuanan lang, hindi talaga silang environmentalist. <laughs> ano sila? They are users yeah. of other people and the subject that they are uh, using is environmental. Yes. Uh, environment. Na. Yeah. At uh, makikita niyo po later on, uh, hopefully as we discuss this, yeah. uh, we can bring out some uh, material yeah. uh, on, yeah. on uh, this. Uh, well, um, let's start with, uh, recently kasi, uh, last February, uh, January 11, ito, from our friend Richard Freeman, mm -hmm. uh, sent to us by our, our old, uh, old uh, friend, si Mike Billington, sent us this article, uh, EIR, uh, said that Prince Charles, si Prince Charles po, yung anak ni Prince Philip, tsaka ni Queen Elizabeth, mm -hmm. in January 11, launched the, quote, Terra Carta for Nature, People, and Planet which he calls the Earth Charter. Alala niyo po si Prince Charles, pwede natin pag-usapan niya, but uh, to push through a green genocide program of radical population reduction, uh, shutting down agro-manufacturing production, and building a $40 trillion green speculative financial bubble all implemented through a central banker's dictatorship. That is the, that is the essence of what this thing is, uh, according to Of course, the article goes through it and then goes through the whole history, which we will go through later, no? Pero yun po yung summary, ito yung gusto nilang mangyari. Hindi po, hindi po bago to. Hindi kami na so sorpresa na, uh, na ginagawa ni Prince Charles to. Kasi alam po natin na... Uh, ganun talaga mag-isip yung mga yan. And they, they will want to go back to a time where they were the center of the world. Sila lang po yung superpower, sole superpower, at yung mga ibang mga bansa, <coughs> sila yung raw materials producer na kinukunan nila at binibigyan. Yun yung gusto nila mangyari. Ang tinutukoy po natin Prince Charles dito, yung sa Inglaterra, mm. Siya po yung uh, anak ni Prince Philip at Queen Elizabeth. No? Right. Yung, uh, yan si Prince Charles. Kung natatandaan nyo, yung sinasabi natin si Prince Philip na ngayon uh, medyo naghihingalo na siguro, eto si Prince Charles. So, okay, he's also known as Prince of Wales. No? Pero anak yan ni Queen Elizabeth at si, si uh, Prince Philip. Yung pong si Prince Philip, medyo naging alun na ngayon. Pero siya po ang uh, namumuno nitong organization called WWF, mm. World Wildlife Fund for Fund. Nature. Okay. Uh, ito po, sa kanya po nag-umpisa itong uh, uh, kanyang uh, salita na, na, na sana uh, pagmamatay siya, he will get reincarnated as a deadly virus mm. para makapagtulong siya sa pagbababa ng uh, populasyon sa mundo. <coughs> deadly virus. Wala pong pinagkaiba dito sa pandemic. Na, eh, alam, alam natin, hindi pa yan si Prince Philip itong pandemic na ito. Dahil buhay pa si Prince Philip. <laughs> hindi pa siya na re reincarnate as a deadly virus. Baka sa susunod na 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 klaseng uh, pandemic siya na yun. No? Any rate, yan ang ganyang pag-iisip. Ito mga overpopulation. Parang, uh, parang bagang galit na galit sila sa humanity. No? Now, itong si Prince Philip ay uh, pinagmulan yan ng uh, pag-iisip ng mga Nazi sa <coughs> sa Germany kasama ni Prince Barnard mm -hmm. no? at uh, Netherlands. Uh, uh, sa Netherlands. Uh, basta, ang Nazi Germany, alam nyo po sa yan, si Prince Barnard, in 1999, the former member of the Nazi 55, married Queen Juliana of of Netherlands and later became the first president of the World Wildlife Fund. Mm -hmm. 
After that si Prince Charles. Yan po yan pong dalawang magkamag-anak yata yan, di ba? Yes, magkamag-anak. Tsaka tsaka mga ano, lahat naman sila eh. No. May may bagay yung royalty <laughs> doon magpipinsan lahat. Tsaka lalo na itong itong mga to kasi Germans to eh. Uh, like si uh, Prince Philip po, yung yung ano niyan, German po siya. Uh, he is a Sax uh, Sax Gotha. Sa, sa, basa, uh, it is a German name. Uh, and in fact, during his wedding to Queen Elizabeth, hindi po naimbita yung dalawang kapatid, tatlo. Tatlong kapatid niyang babae. Bye. Kasi lahat sila Nazi. Yung asawa nila, <laughs> mga, mga general sa uh, Nazi. Oh. So sila na rin, uh, di ba? Uh, so hindi pwede imbita yan kasi kakatapos lang ng World War II. Mm-hmm. So medyo masama yung dating na yun. Mm-hmm. So, yun yun. So that's there there they the, it's not hindi po mahirap hanapin mm-hmm. ang mga proweba na sila ay kasama po sa Ang Nazi, Nazi po ang kanilang pag-iisip palagi genocide. Mm-hmm. Yung pong depopulation right. Nag-uumpisa po sa Nazis. Isa sa mga gusto nilang uh, bawasan siyempre mga Hudyo at mga anim na milyon ng pinatay nila nung uh, linuluto nila sa mga gas chambers. Pero uh, kanya-ganyan po mag-isip yung wala silang pakialam sa buhay ng tao no? para lang uh, magawa yung kanilang kagustuhan. No? Mm-hmm. Ito po, uh, ganyan po nag-iisip ito. Kanya hanggang pagdating po dito kay Prince Charles, mm-hmm. Prince Charles would be about 74, 75 years old mm-hmm. now. No? Uh, so siya po, ang ngayon nagmamaniobra no para itulak itong uh, itong great genocide and tawag niya uh, the green uh, I, I don't know the exact it's, it's, it's an earth charter he calls it an earth charter uh-huh. na parang ano siya para siyang human rights for earth uh-huh. <laughs> di yun na yun eh kasi parang magna carta pero sabi niya terra carta Uh, so uh, parang human rights for Earth. Parang for animal Earth. rights. Uh, Tayo nagbibigay ng animal rights. Uh, <laughs> diba? Uh, so anyway, so that's that's his design. Pero uh, part of that, part of that thrust, mm-hmm. uh, previous to that, even during the Trump administration, um, there is this congresswoman sa US, mm-hmm. right? This congresswoman sa US, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, AOC. Bata siya, uh, uh, you know, marunong magsalita and all. Pero uh, ito yung parang ginagawa nilang attack dog para sa policy na the Green New Deal. When you say the Green New Deal, they're playing on the word the, the New Deal of Franklin Delano Roosevelt which transformed the economy of the U.S. after the Great Depression. New Deal, kasi sabi niya sa mga tao, hindi. Bago na, bago na ang ating gagawin, bago na ang ating kalakaran, di ba? So, ito, this guy, this one, they're saying the Green New Deal. Kailangan green based on uh, climate change, mm-hmm. based on depopulation, based on uh, taking out fossil fuels, taking out oil industry, taking out all of that. So, this is what, this is what she stands for. Pero obviously, alam po natin, ano lang siya eh, siya yung pinapang, siya yung pinakamaingay kasi. Kasi hindi naman siya ganun katalino, <laughs> honestly. But, uh, siya yung pinaka, no. So let's watch siya yung parang poster child niyan. Oh, Green New Deal. Parang Green, ano, Turnberg, ano pangalan. Greta Turnberg, uh, he was a spokesperson, no, bata. Oh, kaya parang siya si, si Al Gore. Ano yun, no? pero sa kongreso siya. So oh. she has filed this, she filed this in Congress. So, Pero ano, itong si President Biden, mm-hmm. yan na rin ang kanyang tinutulak, yes, di ba? Yes, right. So, Green New Deal. Uh, so, so that is what's happening now. So, let's let's watch this short clip. What is the Green New Deal? Ano ba yung nasa loob ng Green New Deal? Uh, tapos suriin natin after. Okay. Last, Last week, week, New York Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Democratic Senator Edward Markey introduced the Green New Deal, a non-binding resolution that would radically overhaul America's economy in the name of fighting global climate change. 
the resolution bundled together a variety of big-ticket progressive policy priorities, not all of which were obviously related to climate change. From universal health coverage to a jobs guarantee to subsidized college, the proposal was swiftly praised by much of the 2020 Democratic presidential field. Yet even some liberals wondered if it was trying to do too much at once. In attempting to be all things to everyone, would the Green New Deal end up being nothing to anyone? Veronique Deruji, a Reason columnist and senior research fellow at the Mercatus Center at George Mason University, joined me to explain what the Green New Deal means, why it would be so expensive, and why even socialist countries in Europe don't try to do this much. So the Green New Deal, I've been hearing an awful lot about it. It's got so many provisions. It's got universal health care and free college and high-speed rail that's going to be so awesome it will make air travel unnecessary. Also, it's going to help us fight climate change. Uh, so I guess I just want to start with an overview. What is the Green New Deal? What sort of policies does it include? Help us understand it. So there are two parts of the Green New Deal, right? There's one that is meant to move us away from dirty energy technologies and towards green energy technologies. So it's like that's the high speed rail, that's the, uh, the in massive investment on solar and wind. And so there's all that stuff. And then there's this other part, uh, which is all about income security, guaranteed income, guaranteed jobs, uh, free colleges. I don't I'm not quite sure how these two things work or if they're necessary together. And But the one really massive contradiction that I see between those two parts is like one of the way they sell the green part of the deal is that it's going to create this great boom in the economy and create millions of jobs. And if that's the case, why do you need all these social programs? So this is a jobs program and a welfare program and a way of fighting climate yeah. change, all wrapped up in one policy. And delivered within 10 years. Wow, that's pretty Not impressive. Bad. Give us a sense of how much some of these policies would cost. I mean, Medicare for All, uh, your colleague uh, at, estimated dollars. something like $32 trillion. That's just the health care portion and of that's over, What about the rest that's of over, it? Again, that's over 10 years, right? right? The, I've, seen, I've seen estimates of like on the, on the green stuff, it could be you know, anywhere between $12 trillion to $20 trillion. And that's on top of the $32 trillion oh, yeah, for Medicare that's, for All. Oh, that's for the green. That's for the green side, right? So it's like really expensive on the on the green energy side. It's really expensive just on the Medicaid side. On You know, it's, it's going to be hundreds of trillions of dollars of federal commitment. I think the argument that I've heard from folks who support the Green New Deal say that what this really is, is it, it's an aspirational document, yes. a framework that is designed to respond to the scale of the threat that climate change represents. So let me ask you, are there any good ideas in there? Um, and uh, are, is there anything that we should be pursuing? How exactly would this uh, fight climate change. Well, so for me, it's really hard to actually assess this deal credibly because it doesn't even tell you what the priorities are, what the costs are, how we're going to be paying for this. So in some sense, it sounds like it's hard to assess simply because it's all packaged together and because they have decided to roll it all into one yeah. big policy proposal. That makes it difficult to figure out which of those ideas might even be. Yeah. Feasible. Well, the, the other thing is actually, I have to say, like, you know, without being completely paranoid, is really the goal is basically even more intervention of the government into multiple areas of our lives and just kind of, you know, just covered up with a big green bow. An early version of the FAQ that accompanied yeah. this said that they wanted to provide uh, income for people who were unwilling to work. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, They've since retracted that, but that basically sounds like a UBI, a yes. universal basic income, which is basically government money for anyone, regardless of whether you're working or not. Um, talk a little bit about that uh, and... Uh, what do you think of that idea? It's it, the universal basic income is something that some libertarians have actually said they support at times. Yeah, the reason is simple, right? We have a system right now that's highly paternalistic. It's highly inefficient. It's actually it's not serving poor people really well. Right, and it's very fractured yeah, exactly. across multiple so, social so basically programs. Basically, bureaucrats are telling you how much we can spend on housing, how much you can spend on food, how much you can spend on this and that, right? So, in a sense, UBI is a 
tempting for libertarians and for a lot of people because it gets rid of all of this stuff and you basically have a system less paternalistic you treat poor people with decency and and you and you you acknowledge that they can actually they know better than bureaucrats in washington what's good for them the other thing that i think is somewhat appealing at least for someone like me who's in ubi i mean i want to say from the beginning i'm against it but is the fact that this, that's one thing that the government does pretty well is to actually cut checks. I mean, when you look at Social Security, right, I mean, the, the amount of improper payment is really high, but as a share of the whole program of how much, you know, as a share of all the payments made, it's, it's, it's under 1%, which is much less than, you know, than Medicare, Medicaid, um, the earned income tax credit, massive improper payments. So these are two things, but that's where it stops because, um, even in the best case scenario where you get you substitute a UBI for all the other form of welfare, um, you know, it's it's insane because you're like you're having a program where you tax the rich to give back to the rich. You you end up making welfare a system that caters a lot to non-disabled, non-poor, not it's just it's it's a really bad system. There's also the fact that I don't even believe that we'll ever reach a moment where we get rid of all these other programs, plus we can't guarantee that they don't come back. So, I mean, it's, it's a really hard system to support, even in its ideal form. And yet there's this Green New Deal version, which doesn't even seem to entertain this notion of like actually substituting for all the rest. So it's on top, on top of what we have now. What the Green New Deal is in many ways, it seems to me, is, a, is an attempt to have it all. It's a progressive policy wish list uh, rather than an actual policy proposal. Quite a few of the Democratic Party's uh, 2020 hopefuls have already said positive things about this. Do you see the Green New Deal as being a driving force in progressive politics and Democratic Party politics uh, going forward? Is this something that has a realistic chance? Well, I mean, there's no way they can do this, right? I mean, without a way of paying right. it. I mean, there's just like, there's like, so why are they I mean, backing it if it's a thing that they that is impossible? I guess because it's aspirational, and they feel that if they don't, I I don't know, I don't understand, I don't understand politicians well, at all. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's actually it's our shot to get back to a more normal, you know, discourse from the left that they let them let them kind of try out this dream balloon and when it pops completely i mean then maybe we'll, then what they will have gotten it out of their system and we will stop talking about medicare for all or we'll talk about it in terms of what does it mean in terms of trade-off who's going to be paying for this i uh, thought it was notable how Speaker Pelosi responded to a question about this. Uh, she s responded something like uh, by calling it the green dream or whatever yeah. and just said, well, it's one proposal among many and we'll take a look at all of them, but really kind of dismissed this. Um, well, it suggested to me that leadership, at least, views this as a bad idea. I mean, we can look at a, um, a big government economy that is not has never been as ambitious as this Green New Deal, like the economy of France. I mean, college, college is is free there, right? I mean, and school is free, and one form of Medicare for all. I mean, it, it would take the different form that the, the although Bernie even Sanders in France, uh, the universal health care program is much less ambitious than yes, what Bernie it is, Sanders which is, is calling is why, for. This is why I say. You know, the, the, the French economy is ruled by an ambitious big government, uh, uh, governments, uh, but, but... In, in France, but the, the government is some, makes up something like 50% of the economy, right? It, it does. And but so when you look at what's happening in France, it's kind of interesting. People are really, really pissed because the only way you can actually finance some of that big government is through very regressive taxes, right? So... It means that, yes, the rich are paying a lot, but the burden on the middle class and poor people is really, really, really high. We see the impact of this on people protesting in France massively, and it's been going on for months now. And I mean, it's pretty, it's quite devastating. It's a program to help the poor and middle class that somehow ends up being paid for by the poor and the middle class. Well, there's no right? other way. I mean, it's just there's not enough money at the top. And so you have to go 
towards more regressive taxes. And, and you can, you look at Spain, you look at Italy, you look at all big government countries. And, and this, is, this is how it's done. And, and it's, it's, it's not great. Well, yung po, ang uh, nakita natin, they were discussing the Green New Deal. At uh, for the... Uh, uh, for, our for, for our viewers, para maintindihan po natin, no? ang pinag-uusapan po nila, paano mangyayari yung uh, kaunlaran mm -hmm. na pinapangako nitong mga nagtutulak ng Green New Deal? Mm -hmm. Kung sisirain nila all of the... Uh, methods uh, that are that are in included in the development at uh, katulad po ng energy mm. papalitan nila lahat yung langis ipapasok nila yung uh, yung uh, solar tsaka, wind. tsaka wind na at uh, sabi nila uh, uh, madadami daw ang trabaho no mm. Mm. tapos ang sabi nung uh, babaeng uh, ekonomista mm. Di natin alam kung paano mangyayari yun. No? Parang bigla na lang ang sinasabi, ang sinasabi daw nitong mga environmentalists. Dahil daw pupunta ang uh, lahat ng uh, uh, energy dito sa, sa, ano, sa solar at sa wind, uh, di, dadami daw bigla yung trabaho dito at hindi na kailangan itong... Uh, hindi na kailangan ng tao itong oil, nuclear at uh, iba pang mga sources of energy. At yun ang hindi maintindihan talaga ng mga ekonomista at talagang hindi mo maintindihan. Kasi parang bigla nilang magkoconclude na it does not follow. Because solar and, um, and wind are not uh, the kind of sources of energy that are going to uh, fuel uh, development. Power development. Power, right? hindi, hindi po kakayanin. No? Hindi nila kakayanin ito. No? Uh, and uh, it, they, they don't, no matter how many, how many uh, solar panels you have, you will not going to have it as a source of energy for uh, uh, steel plants. Right. No? Right. Fertilizer, pharmaceutical industries, mm. and all kinds of factories. Hindi po mangyayari yan. No? Kailangan mo yung talagang yung, uh, yung uh, ratio mo of, uh, uh, of uh, energy flux density. No? Yung tinatawag na uh, uh, how much energy you can generate mm. and how much how intense is that uh, uh, energy so that it's going to move uh, machines and uh, all, all, all factories in some way mm. kung, ang, um, kung ang source of energy medyo sabog no? katulad po nitong sinasabi ng wind at solar hindi po magkakaroon ng intensity yung yung tinatawag na energy flux density how the, how dense is that uh, how concentrated yeah, yeah. para bagang ano hmm. para na paggamit mo ng mapurul mapurul na na uh, um, uh, knife uh. knife kuchilyo hmm. at yung ma, ma, ma sharp na hmm. sharp na knife no? At kung yung pong uh, energy na gina-generate po ng, sabihin na natin, nuclear, is very sharp, so it cuts more. Yan po yung sinasabi natin. Uh, tignan nyo po yung mga uh, energy sources ngayon. No? Uh, wood, uh, kilowatt hours per pound, nandiyan coal, 3.8, petroleum. <coughs> 6.4 uranium ito yung sa nuclear yeah. no yeah. is 18 uh, uh is 18900 per kilowatt hour mm. uh which is ang pinakamalapit oil below mo 6.4 lang no yung deuterium wala pa po tayong deuterium but it's supposed to generate 40 million kilowatt hours per, per pound, pound mm. no Yung anti-matter, siguradong wala pa po tayo dyan, yeah. no? Yung one, one, one billion mm. 
140 million kilowatt hours per pound. No? Yan po yung ano, uh, sources of energy natin. Nandun po lang tayo sa uranium, yung 18,900 kilowatt hours per pound. Yung po nga no, yung coal, uh, yung ano, yung uh, solar, mm. tsaka sa, tsaka dito sa, sa wind, sa wind no? mm. napakaliit po, hindi na linalagay yan sa ano, sa listahan. No? <laughs> sa wood pa lang, hindi na po kakayanin ng pareho ng klase ng <laughs> pang uh, ano, yung... Uh, yung ano ng uh, wood yes, no? yes. lalo na yung coal at petroleum mm. tapos ito ang gusto nilang pamalit sa ating sources of energy no? yeah. which, a, which is which is really uh, mind boggling mm. that's why tayo pong mga ano hindi natin maintindihan saan ba nanggagaling ang mga kasinungalingan nito mga tao to? right I, I, I don't know if we have the video Uh, uh, we can look for that. Yung fraud of free energy. So let's play. You remember that video? Maganda po yon. It it illustrates. Uh, yung yung talagang uh, how do you say total nonsense? Ito. Yeah, <laughs> kapuluhan. No, wala talagang. <laughs> yung sinasabi nilang free energy. Ah, uh, yung wind and solar. Uh, uh, it's not free. It's very expensive. Right. No. Because in order to uh, generate uh, reliable energy from uh, solar, kinakailangan meron kang backup system. Yung backup system mo, hindi pwedeng solar. Kailangan oil. No? Kanya, biro mo, ba bakit mo kailangan ng backup system? Pag, kasi po, pag gabi, wala, wala pong araw eh. No? Hmm. Tapos baka yung kakailanganin mong energy, tuloy-tuloy. <laughs> Tapos yung mga baterya mo, uh, na, napakamahal na mga baterya mo. Right, no? right. Tsaka may hangganan, mm. mabilis, ma, mabilis masira yung uh, battery mo. Katulad, yun, tinanong yung cellphone ninyo. Yun. Mm. May, alam nyo, pag battery, may, may lifespan yan. After one year or two years, wala na. Di ba? Right. Ganyan, ganyan din ito. No? So, uh, pag naglagay ka ng solar, uh, yung battery mo hindi, hindi, uh, hindi reliable, hmm. tapos wala naman araw during uh, the night, so what do you do? You have to put up a backup system. Yeah. And that backup system uh, is just as expensive yeah. na, or even more expensive. Yeah. So what do you do? You have two systems mm. to generate electricity for one area. <laughs> no? Kanya po nagiging mahal eh. No? It's, it's so inefficient and ineffective. And it's, it's, it's a total fraud. It's a fraud. It is a bola. Wala, uh, walang air. Parang sa wind. Hot air lang to. Okay, so we'll show it, you. It doesn't take <laughs> genius to see. Uh -huh. Ito nakaka, nakakagulat. Bakit napakaraming mga malalaking mga negosy negosyante mm. na pumapasok Correct. dito sa solar? Correct. Na, Bakit kaya? Bakit kaya? Ano ba ang pinagkikitaan nila dito? Mm. Dahil nakakabenta sila ng kuryente? Dahil yung kuryente mo, ah, <laughs> babayaran ng tao, masigano kamahal? Di ba po? So let's look at the yeah, let's look at this video. Maganda po ito. Pakinggan niyo. Currently, we have over six and a half billion people on this planet. Only, Only a small, small percentage, percentage of them, them however, have, have a standard, standard of living, living which we would consider even tolerable. To maintain the kind of modern quality of life seen in parts of the so-called developed world would require, among other things, a massive increase of electricity. 
in the United States, we have on average three kilowatts of power available per capita. Other industrial nations such as Germany and Japan average from one and a half to two kilowatts available per capita. In India and China, they range from 0.1 to 0.3 kilowatts available. And in some parts of Africa, it gets even worse. Any modern society needs to have a minimal three to five kilowatts of power available per capita with an orientation towards increasing that available power. Globally, that's 20 to 33 billion kilowatts of power necessary simply to adequately maintain the population we currently have. What about in 50 or 100 years when we could have 50 billion people or more? If we as a civilization are to survive to see the next 50 years and build our way out of this economic breakdown crisis, which threatens to bring our population down to one to two billion people through mass epidemic or starvation, we are going to have to seriously rethink the way we view our own relationship to the universe and come up with some drastic changes in our energy policy. The question now, is what is the next state of power the human species must move towards? What will the future energy source be? Uh, Mr. Speaker, this important legislation is an explicit recognition that our great nation must invest today in the development of clean, renewable energy and, and then instead use biofuel. Now biofuel is only half of the emissions of greenhouse gases or hydrogen. No emissions. I challenge gases. our nation to commit to producing 100% of our electricity from renewable energy and truly clean carbon-free sources within 10 years. And to use the funds for research into uh, renewable energy resources and incentives. The belief that so-called soft energy systems or free energy systems can actually power the future of the United States of America or much less the world is only that, a belief. Reality simply and clearly does not substantiate that belief. And yet, that belief permeates leading policymaking circles, claiming to hold the banner of science, though upon inspection, it is being carried forward only by its dogmatic followers, not its own scientific merits. Whether the believers know it or not, their fanatical adherence to such green dogmas will lead to a massive collapse of world population on the order of billions. To start off with, what is claimed as free energy is by no means free. In fact, the choice of the term free by some of its proponents is itself evidence that they are not qualified to give any advice in scientific or economic matters. Claiming that wind or solar power are free energies simply because we may seem to have free access to the fuel source, the wind or the solar radiation, etc., is missing a number of fundamental considerations. Perhaps the most obvious of which is that we still have to build the solar panels and the windmills and lots of them for very little in return. Take a look at a standard General Electric 1.5 megawatt windmill. The area swept out by the spinning blades is large enough to circumscribe a Boeing 747 jumbo jet or even Al Gore. The tower's height alone can range from 60 to 100 meters. That's up to the length of a football field in height. And just this tower alone uses from 200 to 400 tons of steel. For a rating of 1.5 megawatts, this is a massive machine. But 1.5 megawatts is the peak power generation. That is only at optimal wind speeds.
However, wind speeds clearly vary when there's any wind at all. Despite attempts to cover up this fact, in reality, the average power production for these windmills is about a quarter of their peak rating. In this case, slightly more than a third of a megawatt. Rather than believing that this is free energy, look at the full production process of that massive windmill and then ask, how efficient is this? Comparing the physical cost of production to society against the gain to society. For that windmill to be produced, hundreds and hundreds of tons of iron and other ores have to be mined, transported, processed, transported again, and assembled. Advanced ball bearings, brakes, gears, and other components have to be machined. The electrical components have to be designed and built. All for what amounts to, frankly, not much energy produced. In addition, the irregular nature of wind makes the consistency of power unreliable. Very unreliable. There always needs to be a backup energy source available. Claiming that this is the way to power the future is an absurd proposal. Now compare this with some of the frontier nuclear technologies. Take a small 285 megawatt fourth generation high temperature gas cooled reactor like this one, designed by General Atomics. It would require nearly 800 of these windmills to generate the same amount of power as this single small nuclear reactor. The arrangement of an array of windmills requires spacing between them, so each won't interfere with its neighbor's wind. So now, using General Electric's specifications, each 1.5 megawatt windmill requires 88,935 square meters of land, 22 acres. Multiply this by our 800 windmills, and you see that the land area required for these windmills to equal the power output of this single small nuclear plant is 17,600 acres. That's 27.5 square miles over half the size of the city of San Francisco. This 285 megawatts of power would only provide roughly one third of the city's average power usage. So to power the city of San Francisco, it would require one and a half times the total land area of that city, plus a full-scale backup energy source capable of powering the entire city for the times when the wind just ain't blowing. The three units of fourth generation high temperature gas cooled nuclear reactors would fit within a few blocks of the city and they would provide an uninterrupted flow of energy. This comparison is only initially useful to get people thinking in the proper direction. But for those literate in matters of science and economics, those who are not just believers, there is an even more important aspect changes in the quality of power as opposed to the mere quantity. We will come to an elaboration of this subsuming point shortly. To get there, let's take the case of solar power. Now in the attempt to harness solar radiation as an energy source, we again see a highly inefficient process. Take the recently constructed and hyped up Nevada Solar One power plant this plant is rated at 64 megawatts, but that is the power generated at high noon on a clear day. When the less solar intense periods are averaged in, the actual average generating capacity is about 15 megawatts, less than a fourth of the peak rating. This plant covers an area of 400 acres, well over half a square mile, Comparing this with our earlier example of powering the city of San Francisco, it would take 57 such Nevada Solar One plants to generate the same amount of energy as the 2,400 windmills or the three small nuclear reactors. 57 of these plants would cover 22,800 acres or 35.6 square miles. That's three-fourths of the entire city of San Francisco. 
The production of 35 square miles of these solar plants would be an enormous physical cost to society. And again, these systems constantly need backup power to operate. And in this case, a completely different power system is needed to provide power for at least half the time. That is, at night, every night, all night. But let us now look into the science behind why these proposals are completely bunk. The fundamental problem with solar as a source of power is that there is a fixed amount of sunlight that actually reaches the surface of the Earth. This can be measured as the number of watts the surface receives in a square meter. In the United States, on a yearly average, we receive about 200 watts per square meter. It may go up to about 240 in some of our desert regions, perhaps. Uh, now, the problem, uh, the essential problem with solar energy, with any form of solar energy, is that the uh, energy flux of the sun is limited. And uh, it's what, it's, what it comes down to on the average for the United States is 200 watts per square meter. So 200 watts, just think of uh, two 100 watt lights, light bulbs. That's the amount of electricity you would be getting out of a square meter, something you know, about 10 square feet, uh, if you could capture all of the sun's rays. But what's the problem with that? You can't increase that. First of all, that's the limit of solar energy. No amount of concentrating and parabolic reflectors and all these things don't increase that energy flux. That's all that's there. So, relative to other power sources available, solar radiation itself is an inherently lower order power source. And on top of that, our best feasible technologies can only utilize roughly 5 to 15 percent of the solar radiation. While 30 percent efficiency has been achieved in laboratories, these are at extremely high cost, making them not commercially feasible. But 5 or 15 percent or hell, even 30 percent efficiency through whatever advanced technology is applied, the bottom line is that you are still bounded by a lower order energy source from the very beginning. So instead of masturbating with photovoltaic cells or parabolic reflectors or other little gadgets, Let's take our investigation from the top and look at the inherent boundaries of different energy sources by comparing the energy densities of various fuels. The energy available from the fissioning of less than 2 grams of uranium is equal to the energy available from the burning of either 1,260 gallons of oil, 12,300 pounds of coal, or 23.5 tons of dry wood. Again, that is compared to less than 2 grams of uranium. So when comparing the fuel sources by weight, the fissioning of uranium is 3 million times more powerful than burning coal, and 2.2 million times more powerful than burning petroleum. This simple comparison points to a hierarchy among these power sources. Looking at the varying densities of power is illustrative of this, but it is still a quantitative comparison, comparing the different power sources by the change in quantitative amount of energy per weight. The real question remains, what underlies this? What governs this effect we measure as a quantitative change? In order to understand this, Let's take our cue from the ingenious work of the lowly little chlorophyll, nature's powerhouse. With the use of solar radiation to generate electrical power, we see a very inefficient process which relies on turning a fixed amount of low density solar radiation into heat and electrical current. Rather than simply relying on the fixed abiotic energy coming from the sun, the chlorophyll molecule converts solar radiation into the energy and the byproducts necessary to both sustain and develop the higher order processes of the biosphere, or life. The plant takes in carbon dioxide from the air, water and other nutrients from its roots, and uses solar radiation to turn these products into food or sugars for the plant to eat, and oxygen for our biosphere to grow. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> However, nobody actually knows exactly what occurred. I, I hope it was uh, clear. pretty clear, uh, but uh, just let us know if you want to show how we want, you want us to show these clips again, because uh, that, that's a whole 22-minute uh, clip. No? And uh, the reason we wanted to show this to you is because, uh, uh, para makita po natin, itong mga itinutulak na mga green... Uh, New Green Deal. Mm, na, mm. Green ang, New Deal. Green New Deal. Yeah. Na tatanggalin yung source of energy. Hindi <coughs> lang po sa bansang Amerika to eh. Buong mundo, no? yun, yun pong itutulak nila. Tatanggalin po yung uh, sources of energy ng oil at ng, uh, ng iba pa, uh, pati na nuclear. Mm. At ipapalit nila itong solar tsaka sa wind. Mm. At ang pinapakita po natin dito, isa pong uh, malaking, malaking pagkakamali ang gagawin nito. Mm. Ang, uh, at ang mangyayari, siyempre, magugutom yung mga tao no? at mawawalan ng trabaho at babagsak po ang mm. kalidad ng buhay. Mm. Na, natatandaan nyo po yung uh, pinapakita yung, uh, so, yung windmill. Yung windmill, tapos uh, napakalaki ng windmill, mm. tatamaan yung isang agila dahil malaking-malaki yung paikot ng windmill at bumabagsak. Pagbagsak patay, meron mga sumasalong tao doon sa, dun sa agila dahil, <laughs> dahil nakikita nila makakain nila yon Tapos maraming windmill, marami din taong nakaabang mm. dito dahil nag sila na may mga mamamatay na ibon at yun ang kakainin nila. Right. It just wanted to show precisely that these kinds of sources of energy are not going to improve the quality of life but as a matter of fact, bring it down. No? Right. Right. We are getting away from the more efficient scientific uh, methods of generating power. No? Uh, and uh, bakit po nila gagawin yan? Laban po sa sangkatauhan nito mga ito. Mm. They are against humanity. So they do not like uh, development. So they're pushing something uh, as a big, big lie na, yeah. uh, para sakyan po ng mga environmentalists. Mm. Yung pong nakita niyo bandang huli, uh, when uh, it was being shown that uh, the real efficient way of using solar solar energy is so the way we do it, no? expose our uh, crops to it, no? and it uh, produces a a kind of uh, radiation which uh, enhances uh, enhances uh, crop uh, productivity. Mm. At dahil meron pong crop productivity, nagkakaroon din po ng tinatawag na uh, chlor, ano ito? Photosynthesis. photosynthesis. Yung photosynthesis po is <coughs> paano nako-convert yung uh, araw, sinag ng araw, dito sa masustansyang mga dahon at uh, damo at mga prutas dahil sa tinatawag na photosynthesis, mayroon pong proseso ang nangyayari. Hmm. Ang, hindi po natin naabutan yung sinasabi ng babae, pero what she says, <coughs> up to now, that science of discovering how sunlight actually increases the productivity of our land, no? through just by the radiation that it emits, no? it's not yet fully explainable. Photosynthesis has not yet been fully uh, oh, okay. explained and discovered as to its process. Mm -hmm. no? Pero they, ang sinasabi po natin, and yet it is the most efficient use of solar energy mm -hmm. to produce food. Nakita nyo, Pagka-produce ng food, uh, yung greens, 
to dumami tapos dumating yung baka kumain ng greens tapos dumating yung tao kinain yung baka no? it produces food for man no? what the sun that is the most efficient use of the sun now uh, and not not for generating uh, what you call the energy flux density which is uh, which is napakita po natin sa inyo mm. na 2 grams of uh, of uranium no can uh, produces the same amount of energy as tons and tons of coal and tons and tons of oil no you po ang uh, what you call the level of efficiency no? kanya po ang uh, nuclear power plants kinakailangan maliit lang ang lugar na kakailanganin para mag-produce ng energy nung pinakita po sa inyo yung solar at mm. yung wind mm. to produce 250 megawatts of uh, of power energy for if you had if you use wind as mm. a as a source mm. to produce you will need one and a half times one and a half times land the size of the whole of San Francisco to provide 20% of the power needs of San Francisco. <laughs> it is ridiculous. Mm. No? Yung sa solar naman, it says you need to have a solar farm that is three fourths the the area, the land area of San Francisco mm. to produce twenty percent the energy needs of San Francisco. And this is in the assumption mm. that this solar power and uh, and wind power are functioning at one hundred percent level. Mm. And sinasabi niya, the best that it can do is 5 to 15 percent utilization rate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you put up a plant of solar plant that's supposed to produce 50, 250 megawatts, it does not produce 250 megawatts, it only produces maybe 25 megawatts. Yan ang sinasabi nung, uh, nung ating uh, reporter, the one that commentator. No? Because ang utility, utilization rate of all power plants mm. and all solar panels <coughs> are, is uh, about 5 to 15 percent utilization. Mm -hmm. Whereas ang nuclear power plant, pa, it's 97 percent utilization. Yung 3% is uh, parang, uh, parang they provide for downtime. 97% mm -hmm. ut utilization, 24-7. 24, 24, 24 hours, hours day, 7 days a week. 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Yan po yung nugne. That's why it is so uh, uh, obvious that if you wanted development, you will look for the most efficient source of energy. <laughs> but itong Green New Deal, ang gusto nila, dalin dito. Why? Because they want, they don't want development. Yeah. They keep on lying that mm -hmm. they say there is going to be a lot of jobs. No? Mm -hmm. But they don't want development because if you move towards that, you will kill the population. Uh, there will be starvation. And an example of that is that Keystone Pipeline. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yung sabi nga nila, yun yung ginawa ni Trump during his administration. <clears throat> Meron siyang negotiate na deal with Canada para mag, mag, uh, mag uh, to build and construct and provide uh, oil from Canada down to the United States. And this is called the Keystone Pipeline Project. Tinanggal ni Biden yun. Sabi ni Biden, hindi na kailangan yun, masama yun. 
Uh, it's uh, dirty, hindi kasama sa environmentalism, climate. And the uh, first few days of his uh, <laughs> pag-upo pa lang ni Biden, kinansal niya yung project, he already put 40,000 workers, 40,000 people out of work. Out of jobs. Wala nang trabaho. Ano mong, ano mong gagawin daw nila? E di matuto sila mag-code daw sa computer, baka makahanap daw ng trabaho. As encoders. No? Yun daw yung These ano. are engineers that are uh, yeah. constructing the pipeline yun daw yung solution for oil. No? Uh. And this <laughs> this is what, uh, well, Green New Deal yan. Yes. No? Yes. And you, you'll see, and very early you're seeing the effects of this. Uh -huh. uh, and clearly, in sa Texas, no? Yes. Nakara na nakaraang buwan, nagkaroon sila ng massive uh, mm. blizzard. Mm. Blizzard po yung mga snow, di ba? Mm. I think we have 5 million people, 5 million people were affected. And for weeks, they did not have water mm. or, or electricity. Yeah. Why? The area that was... Uh, that was hit, no electricity, no water, was an area that was being powered substantially by solar solar uh, panel, panels and windmills. Mm -hmm. Yung pong karatig na city, mm -hmm. na katabi-katabi lang, meron sila, ang nagpapadakbo sa kanila, ang main source of energy nila was nuclear. Wala pong problema doon. Mm. Pero dito po, magka-problema. Bakit? Yung blizzard <laughs> froze the the LSEs of the windmills. Uh, propellers. Uh, propellers. Mm. It froze them. So hindi, sa lamig, hindi gumagalaw. No? Hindi makagalaw. Tapos yung solar panels na tabunan ng snow hindi po umandal wala pong kuryente at marami pong namatay dahil dyan marami tayong story ang naririnig uh, maski yung ating mga kapwa Pilipino na nakatira doon kung yeah. ba uh, pakinggan mo yung story nila kala nila patay na sila kasi yung mga iba nagpapakamatay na lang dahil Two weeks na walang pagkain at hindi na alam kung kailan magkakaroon. Hmm. Tapos kung wala kang kuryente, hmm. wala kang heater. Yes. Kung wala kang heater, uh, pag maninigas ka na lang sa lamig. Meron pong maraming namatay dahil dito. Hmm. I'm sure hindi nila iniisip rin yun when they signed that contracts to be powered by... With, uh, wind and solar at the time. Kala nila, okay lang, and the alternative source, dito tayo, para environmentalist tayo, malinis. Uh -huh. Pero hindi nila iniisip na that policy, na implement na, enong nang blizzard which is nature that happens. Climate change always happening, has happened throughout uh, the, 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 the existence of the planet Earth, always climate change. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, talaga nandiyan yan. <clears throat> Hindi dahil sa atin yan. Nandun talaga yan. That's what happens. That's the process of how the world works, how the uh, the earth moves, how the universe works. So, hindi nila akalain siguro yung mga tao dun sa Texas. Siguro sinuportahan pa nila kasi mas malinis kuno. Hmm. Yun. It resulted in death. <coughs> it shows that the policy <coughs> mukhang harmless Dito sa Pilipinas yata, I think we have two, right? We have two wind farms, yung major. I don't know where One they are. Locos, and then yung Pililia, di ba? Mm -hmm. Sa Quezon yata yun eh. Kasi ginagawa ng turista. But they're massive. I don't know what they claim, how much energy they get from that, mm -hmm. from those wind farms. Pero... Very, yeah, yeah. very little. And then very little. Uh, if I told it's nice to take a picture, oh, no? lang, no? para sa mga turista, papakita nila, oh, ganda-ganda, puro solar. Oh, pero hindi mo mag-develop yung uh, syudad nyo o bansa nyo with, uh, that. with that. Hindi yeah. talaga kaya. Huh? 
At any rate, uh, kanina po, naumpisaan mm. natin itong ating uh, programa mm. by the, uh, <coughs> well, introducing the this person, Prince Charles, mm. who is supposed to be uh, now uh, gl globally uh, organizing this uh, Terra Carta. Carta. Terra Carta. Well, um, it's parang uh, for the earth. No? It's a charter for the earth, <laughs> for in favor of the earth. No? Uh, ito po yung uh, sinasabi niya. So, alam niyo, nagaling sa mga environmentalist yan. At ang uh, itutulak nila yung uh, tinatawag na Green New Deal. But hindi lang ito nagtutulak ng solar panels. <laughs> hindi lang yon. What they will do is create the conditions so that uh, so that uh, the populations and nations will be forced mm. into accepting this uh, this system. How? Um, tandaan nyo po earlier we were talking about Prince Philip that he wanted to. Uh, be uh, reincarnated as a deadly virus so that he can make his contribution to the world's overpopulation problem. Di ba po? Ngayon, meron po tayong deadly virus ngayon. Ano po ang uh, resulta na itinulak nila sa mga mga iba-ibang bansa? Ang sabi nila, kung gusto nyong uh, Huwag lumaganap yung uh, sakit mm -hmm. na lumaganap naman, no? pero huwag, uh, huwag, huwag uh, mag spread mag-lockdown kayo. Oh, so sa takot ng mga iba-ibang iba iba gobyerno, mm -hmm. nag-lockdown. Anong nangyari nung lockdown? Bagsak ang ekonomiya. Ano pa ang nangyari sa lockdown? Walang makapag-travel uh, hmm. sa iba-ibang lugar. Nagserado na ang iba-ibang industriya by now. Hmm. Yung airline industry is almost completely bankrupt. Yeah. Na? Yeah. Ang tourism industry is, I'm not sure it will ever recover. Hmm. Unless you will have tourism for locals. Mm -hmm. But yung foreign market for tourism, medyo malabo po yan. Mm -hmm. Dahil pahirapan, pahirapan ang pag-travel. And it is not just tourism, but all other businesses. Trade. Bagsak. Trade, Trade. Bagsak. No? Mm -hmm. So what happens? So your economy goes down. Mm -hmm. Your economy goes down, your people do not have jobs. Your people do not have jobs. Yeah. They will starve and they will die. Mm -hmm. So, yan, <laughs> parehong objective mm -hmm. ng Environment Green New Deal right. na right. tsaka ito. Ano pa ang mangyayari? Para sisiguraduhin nila na it, ang mga, but itong kay Prince Charles, para sigur, at siguraduhin nilang hindi makaka- ahon na itong mga bansa. Paghihiram ngayon ang mga negosyante at mga iba-ibang bansa mm -hmm. ng kanilang uh, ihiraman nila ng pera para may kapital silang ma mapaandar ulit ang kanilang mga ekonomiya. Mm -hmm. Ano po ang conditionalities na ilalabas nila? Kung hihiram ka, Mr. P Philippines, Kinakailangan, tanggalin mo to, tanggalin mo yan, mm -hmm. tanggalin mo yan. Kinakailangan, sarado mo yung coal plants. Kinakailangan, uh, magbukas ka ng mga solar, solar panel systems. Mm -hmm. What will that do? It will bring down our capability to recover. Because they will use uh, yeah. the financial uh, uh, method of uh, of imposing conditionalities if you need to borrow. Mm. And if you cannot borrow, then you will not develop. 
So it's all happening. When you put it all together, makikita nyo, it happens. What is the whole objective? The objective is anti-humanity. The objective is depopulation. Depopulation part. Hmm. And how do they do it? They're doing it this way, and now here they're getting uh, leaders from different nations to accept this program, mm. this Green New Deal, this Great Reset, this uh, <laughs> New World Order. Yes. Forcibly. Yeah. As imposed on the world. Yes. We have to understand this. Mm. Uh, uh, kung minsan meron po tayo dyan mga taong mga Diyos, ay hindi naman siguro kanyang kasama. <laughs> Alam mo niyo pa, si Satanas walang hangganan ng kasamaan eh. No? At marami pong ganyan ngayon. No? At dapat maintindihan natin yung sistema na pinapairal mm. para alam natin kung paano tayo lalaban mm. Uh, o iiwasan natin yung ganyan sistema. No? Dahil uh, maski na malalakas po ang kalaban kung magkakaisa po ang isang populasyon, populasyon ng mga iba-ibang bansa, kaya po nilang talunin. Maski na po ang Amerika, pag magkaisa sila, kaya po nilang talunin. No? Pero kinakailangan maunawaan po ng mga sangkatauhan mm na ito ang mga kasamaan na kalaban, pwede nyo i- ihambing nyo po yung depopulation, mm-hmm. yung environmentalism, yung kanilang uh, objective, yung mm-hmm. kanilang layunin na babaan ang populasyon ng mundo mm-hmm. at palitan ng sistema ng ekonomiya para mawawala tayo sa industrialisasyon, mawawala tayo sa agro-industries at uh, papasok tayo dito sa Terra Carta. No? All for the Earth. Tinatawag nilang All for oh. the Earth. Pero ano pong mangyayari? Siyempre, ang may iwan po dito, ang gusto ng mga mga tao na namumuno, The sila lang ang mabubuhay. Hmm. Ang mga bansa po, katulad po dito sa Pilipinas, sa Africa, mm-hmm. sa South America, at iba-iba pang uh, lugar. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, maski na sa China at India, no? ang gugustuhin nila talaga uh, mabawasan. At uh, ito nga yung virus. Siguro dahil ang tagal-tagal mamatay ni Prince Philip, hindi siya, he has not reincarnated into a deadly virus. So what they did was manufacture the virus. <laughs> Sabi yeah. nila yung virus daw na nakita kay, di ba naka na hospital si Prince Philip? Philip huh? Ang sabi nila yung virus daw na nakita sa, sa puso niya mm-hmm. ay uh, marami daw spikes. <laughs> Parang yung ano ng COVID Kamukha daw ng COVID virus Well, speaking of that nga Ngayon, Metro Manila Di ba? Will be locked down again Tinatawag nilang Circuit breaker, kunwari Di ba? Ito yung style nila na tinatawag First, uh, nag-rise yung mga cases Hindi natin alam kung saan galing Sabi ng Okta Research Taka yung DOH Magkakonchaba yan Oh, tomatas at tomatas, kailangan ni lockdown ulit yung Metro Manila. This is when we were starting to move. Ano, and now, non-essential travel to and from inside NCR, wala na. You cannot go out of town, you cannot do pag pag bakasyon kayo, wala na. Tapos, uh, yung mga essential businesses lang daw pwede. So, yung essential workers, tapos may curfew tayo. Eh, para na tayong nasa Marshall doon yan. We're already there. So, this is what it is. Again, even with all the questions of, uh, of uh, the, actual, the actual virus itself, and uh, yun ang parating ko sinasabi, yung pinakita ko yung graph na 
Kung ilang, in 2019, how many flu cases sa Pilipinas? 68,000. In 2020, nakahanap sila ng flu. Uh, 31 cases. Only 31 cases. 1919, 68,000 cases. In 2020, rangkaso, 31. Yeah. DOH, DOH and the World Health Organization. Yeah. Because all countries, we no monitor nila. So you assume that the DOH submits this to the WHO. Yeah. Pero biglang nawala nga yung rangkaso. Pero no. lahat COVID. Dumadami yung COVID, bumababa ang trangkaso, ang uh, pneumonia, uh, ang meningitis, at iba-ibang mga sakit. Uh, na, uh, pati ang mga heart attack, bumababa, pero lahat nagiging COVID. Hindi mo na mahanap. So siguro, sabi nga ni Ito, siguro ang gamot sa pneumonia, COVID. Mm. No? <laughs> Di ba? So, tapos, binab- ayaw pa rin nilang paggamit yung early treatment. Uh, di ba yung mga mga murang droga na hindi na daw hindi na lampas na yung patent ng mga nagmanufacture sa kanila so India and China have been uh, manufacturing HCQ and ivermectin for humans okay and sabi nga ng maraming doktor dito it's very effective it's very effective as a prophylactic even for prevention once every 21 days once every 3 weeks or kung nagkasakit kayo, once every seven days. Pero yung cost ng isang capsule po ng kunyari, Ivermectin, 35 pesos lang po. Hmm. Okay, but ayaw nilang tubukan to? Bakit nila pinipigila ng taong bayan na, na accept to these types of cures? Pero hmm. meantime, sasabihin nila kailangan magpabakuna, di ba? Yun ang part ng Great Reset. This is what they need to do to implement their Green New Deal for the world. Yan ang gagawin nila ngayon. Eh ngayon pa lang nakikita natin yung mga lawmakers natin eh. Nagsasubmit na ng mga proposal about opening up our economy. Mm-hmm. Changing our economic, uh, changing our constitution mm-hmm. to accommodate 100% foreign ownership. And then we also saw, nakita po natin, yung condition Yung isang report, I think two weeks ago, mm. uh, by an uh, Indian or Pakistani show, right? Mm. Sabi nila, yung Pfizer daw, sinasabi sa isang South American country, hindi namin kayo bibigyan ng gamot ng vaccine. Ah, Brazil. Mm. Na walang garantiya. Yung collateral nyo, military basis nyo, bibigyan nyo sa amin. Hindi yung mga, at de parang, Oh, ganyan but, din. Oh. And then, sabi, ang collateral nyo, lahat ng international assets ninyo. Oh. Lahat ng international Ayan. assets ibigay nyo sa amin as collateral. Collateral, kung di kayo magbayad. Kung di kayo makabayad. Di kayo makabayad. Oh, no. oh. Uh, tapos, yung isa naman, nagsasabi, na isa sa mga conditionalities nila sa isang bayan, <laughs> hindi nila na itukoy diretso. Isang bayan ay... U.S. military base daw papayagan may tayo din sa, right. sa bansa. Yeah. Eh, alam nyo po, an, yan po ang sinabi nila na eh, sa atin nung kay, tanong nyo po kay Pangulong uh, Duterte. Mm. No? Yan po ang banta ni Biden sa kanya. Tsaka ni, uh, ni sino ba yun? Obama. Hindi kayo makakakuha ng uh, Pfizer, ng vaccine. Kung hindi nyo i-renew yung VFA, Visiting Forces Agreement, tsaka yung MDT, yung uh, Mutual Defense Treaty, kasi abrogated na yun by this year. Mm. This year, wala na pong visa yung Mutual Defense Treaty. So, kailangan daw ipa, ituloy yan. E, para mong sinasabing gawin mong military base ang Pilipinas. Mm. Na? Kung hindi, wala kayong uh, Pfizer. Yun ang sinasabi nila. Hmm. Yun ang ano. Ay, 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 Pero sa yan, akin, pharma lang yan. Ha? At oh, this is a big pharma. Palagay ko, okay lang yun eh. Kasi, uh, baka mabubuhay pa tayo kung walang Pfizer eh. No? <laughs> o tsaka walang AstraZeneca. Dahil oh. napakaraming mga problema po nito. Oh. No? Yep. Uh, 
yung Sinovac tsaka yung Sputnik V, yun po ay as of now, wala pa ako naririnig ng mga problema dyan sa vaccine na yan. Hmm. Pero kami po dito, na, ang ayaw po natin, yung mandatory, yes. walang pilitan. Uh-huh. Kung ayaw po ng tao magpabaksin, wag po kayong gagawa ng paraan para mapilitan magpabaksin. Correct. Yun ang sinasabi ko minsan, at nung nasa gobyerno natin, o oh, sige, well, well, hindi natin pipilitan magbaksin, pero hindi siya makakapunta sa bangko. Hindi siya makakabili ng pagkain kung hindi siya nakabaksin. Right. Anong klase yan? Kasi ganun din. Ganun din ang ibig sabihin natin. Kung ganyan po ang itratrato nyo sa tao, kayong mga nasa gobyerno, hmm. eh, hindi, mag, hindi tatagal. Hindi tatagal. Uh, tatanggalin kayo dyan ng ating mamamayan. At marahil, dahil sa galit, mm. kasi kakapit po sila sa patalim. Yes. Kayong mga nagsasalita ng ganyan, na nangluloko ng taong bayan, aabot din sa, na, sa uh, punto. punto na magkakaisa ang taong bayan at gagalaw at gagalaw. Mm. No? Hindi po tatagal ito. Ngayon lang po, Itong mga kahirapan na yeah. uh, dinaranas ng mamamayan, kung ano-anong uh, kabulaan ng lumalabas, kasi eleksyon, eh, hindi po, marami pong nahihirapan at namamatay sa gutom. Mm. At nakahanda na po silang kumapit sa patalim. Hindi po magtatagal. Kung walang mangyayari dito sa darating na dalawang buwan, tatlong buwan, mm. Mr. President, we warn you, no, yeah. not coming from us, but the people. Mm. This is how we feel. How we feel. You will be facing a chaotic and anarchic situation, uh, never before felt uh, by your administration mm. and possibly by previous administrations. Yeah. No. Because ang galit po ng tao ngayon talagang gutom. Yeah talagang namamatay. Mm. Hindi po abot, hindi po dahil sinabi ng ABS sa ABN sa kanila mm. na tanggalin ng tanggalin ng mga namamahala. Wala mm. pong ganyan. Wala. Talaga pong uh, uh, galing po sa kanilang kalagayan mm. ang pagkapit nila sa patalim. Mm. Tama. And it, it's a very dangerous and wag niyo pong isipin, Mr. President, na kaya niyong kaya nyo dahil may militar kayo or police, hindi nyo po makakayanan yung galit ng tao. That's what's happening now. And nararamdaman po ng lahat ang kahirapan ng buhay at nararamdaman na po lahat ang, ang, ang galit. Ang galit lang, hindi lang galit, pero sabi nga ni Chairman, kapit sa patalim, wala nang, wala nang choice. Wala na tayong mapupuntahan. Nakaayos na yung korte, mm. yung mga lehislatura, hindi naman tumutulong, kakampi pa ng... Tapos yung executive po, kayo po, all of you, right. politically. So, the thing to do, the thing to do is, uh, go back to the principle of saving lives. What is it, what is it that it will take, what will it take, to try to move sa- to save lives no? and uh, uh, improve our economic situation. No? What, are, what is that? At uh, kung talagang tutusin, alam nyo po kayong nasa gobyerno, kayo mga duke, IATF, yeah. alam nyo na yung, yung bakunang yan, will not save the country, will not turn the, the economic situation around. Right. You know that. Even if you're not economist, alam nyo na nambobola lang yan. Sila Duque, sila Benjokno, sila ano pa yun, Dominguez, nambobola lang yan. At uh, sumasakay lang kayo sa kanilang sa kasinungalingan. Mr. President, huwag niyong payagan ito. 
Huwag kang sasakay sa kanilang kasinungalingan. Alam nyo rin, Mr. President, na hindi uubra yan, bakunang yan pampaikot pampa ng ating ekonomiya. Alam nyo yan. So, if you're really intent on saving lives, do it the way we are proposing. It's, it's not easy, I understand, dahil ang kalaban mo dito, mga oligarko. Mm-hmm. But you're gonna have to do it. This is your defining moment. Kung talagang gusto mo yung sabi mong uh, legacy na iiwan mo bago ka mamatay, mm-hmm. that you have dismantled the oligarchic hold on the public utilities, na if you really believe that is what you want, do it now. Don't tell people lies. Mm, lies. People, people thought, and you said that your legacy, because you already dismantled the oligarchy, <laughs> that is a lie, Mr. President. Right. Right. You have not even gotten rid of the Lopez's. Mm. Only ABS-CBN is not the Lopez's. Mm. Alam mo yun, Mr. President. Pangilinan, mm. hindi lang yung Meralco. Nandyan yan sa tubig, nasa telecom, mm. nasa highways, mm. toll gates. Mga Ayala, alam mo na lahat yan. Same sila. Same. <laughs> Aboytis. Mm. Ramon Ang. Lahat. No? Alam mo kung saan naka... Sila ang may control sa buhay ng mamamayang Pilipino. Mm. Ang tanong namin, Mr. President, sila din ba ang may control sa iyo? Are they controlling you too? We know they control senators, they control probably the whole Congress, and probably the judiciary is in their pocket. But what we don't and we cannot answer is do they have the president in their pockets as well? If we are to turn this country around, Article 12, Section 17 and 18, it is a move in accordance with our Constitution. And when you do this, Mr. President, rest assured you will have 100% support from the Filipino people. Whoever objects to this will not even reach half of 1%. So why don't you do that, Mr. President, for the good of all of the Filipino people? If you don't do this, I am not sure the Filipino people and the coming generations uh, will uh, will uh, appreciate your six-year tenure as president of this country. This is the this is the solution. You know it. The fact that you had mentioned that that is the legacy you want to leave, or you feel you have left, but. Uh, the fact that you have mentioned that you dismantled the oligarchy, which is a lie, mm. means that you know, you know that you have to do that. We will help you. The people will be behind you, 100%. And the, the armed forces will be behind you, 100%. Just do that, Mr. President. And... Uh, we guarantee that uh, until the day you die and until the way the day we die, we will be praising you to high heavens. <laughs> if you do that. If you do that. Yeah. We have to take a stand against 
the the effort to depopulate the world. We have to take a stand against people who are anti-human and anti uh, anti-development. Tayo po nandito, and part of that, Mr. President, is your is your dismantling of the oligarchy, real dismantling. The, the, whether you see it or not, mm. the dismantling of the oligarch's hold on the public utilities will dismantle the oligarch's soul mm. on the whole of our country. Mm. At least now we will get to choose who our leaders will be, not the oligarchs. The oligarchs have been in a position to choose the leadership of this country. And they will be in a position to choose the leadership next year if you don't, <coughs> if you don't do your duty, Mr. President. So this is the move against the new world order. Right. This is the direction, the, the principle behind the fighting those that are against national sovereignty. Right. We will retake yes. our stolen country. Yes. And we will declare to the rest of the world that for, by that time, when you do that, we will declare to the rest of the world that the Philippines is now truly sovereign. Yes. And we will praise you to high heavens if you do that, yeah. Mr. President. If you don't do that, <laughs> uh, forget it. <laughs> because even if we wanted to, we cannot, because people will be so angry at us. Right, right. So angry at us. Because if you don't do it, then their suspicions will be confirmed. Mm -hmm. What will be their suspicions? Not that you are afraid. Mr. President, their suspicion that you were in bed with the oligarchs uh, will be confirmed. Ganyan lang po yan, Mr. President. Ang tingin po ng tao, kalaban mo ba ang oligarko o kakampi mo? At alam na natin bakit kakampi mo, hindi po ba? No? Salita lang ba yan sinasabi nung galit kay sa oligarko? Salita lang ba yan na parang moro-moro? Medyo napuno na po ang taong bayan. Eh. Oh. Ilan taon mo nang sinasabi yan, minumura mo sila. Pagkatapos, you will say, I apologize. Pero wala naman pong nangyayari. Hmm. Sabi mo nun, may continuing crime sila, estafa, or no bail. Wala naman pong nakukulong. Tapos, magsusori ka pa sa kanila. Hmm. Hmm. Ang nagpasara po ng ABS-CBN, alam natin, hindi po kayo. Dahil yung, yung kaso ng Solicitor General, hindi po, umun, hindi po uh, umusad. Uh, umusad. Ang nangyari po, yung mga kongresista, sila Marcoleta, sila ano, sila ang nagpasara. Hindi mm. ko alam kung utos mo yon, Utos mo ba yon? Ang sabi nila, hindi daw eh. Mm. Pero bakit po andyan pa ang mga Lopeses? Sila po ang main, major uh, seller ng kuryente sa Meralco. Sila pa rin ang konektado sa Meralco dahil yung kanilang uh, agreement sa Meralco ay permanente sila. Permanente daw na bibilhin ng Meralco ang kuryente ilalabas nila. Mm. Yun ang kondisyon na magbenta sila ng, ng uh, shares nila kay Pangilinan. that Meralco will buy uh, from First Power yata or anong pangalan ng corporation na yun? First Generation. Ah. Oh, uh, sa Meralco, lahat ng iproproduce ng uh, first, uh, first Gen. First Gen. 
pagbibili ng Meraco. Yes, Yan sir. ang kondisyon kung paano nagbinenta okay. ng Lopez S. Condition of the sale. Of the sale. Para sila kumikita pa rin. Di Meraco pa rin sila. Hmm. Anong binuwag mo, Mr. President? What do you, you dismantle? Please. Please tell us. <laughs> These water oligarchs, they did not even pay for the damages. Mm -hmm. And the contracts that you are having them made no, is a renewal of their contract. Mm -hmm. This is secret. You don't want to tell the people the details of this contract. You don't even want to tell the people exactly how much they owe the government. You know, kailangan magbayad agad sila muna. Tapos, mabibigyan ko sila ng bagong kontrata. <laughs> Hello? Ba't mo mabibigyan ng bagong kontrata? Nahuli mo na nga silang na kriminal eh. Dapat nga, nakinulong mo sila eh. Tapos, mabibigyan mo ng bagong kontrata? <laughs> Kunwari, galit na galit ka? <laughs> Mr. President, huwag <laughs> naman, no? Well, there are so many other things that we could have discussed yeah. uh, with regard to uh, Prince Charles, no? because we opened up about him. But what we'll do is we'll reserve the detail. That new world order na maraming nagsasabi, sinabihan na raw ni ni President Duterte. Hindi po natin alam yan. Pero ito pong New World Order, ito pong uh, Terra Carta, yeah. itong Environment, this is Green New Deal. Mm. Ay, reset, uh, great Reset. Great Reset. Build is, Back Better. Build yeah. Back Better. Isa, uh, isa pong buong system yan. Yeah. No? At uh, ang kalaban po nitong sistema nito ay isang katauhan. Mm. The whole uh, inevitable objective no? uh, is uh, depopulation. Pagbabawas ng uh, populasyon at pagpapatay ng mga tao uh, by, by economic uh, yeah. uh, manipulation. Yeah. So, the, this system, just last, last uh, word no? before we read our messages. Yung sistema po ito, pag ipina uh, ipina uh, in a rollout nila or oh, successful sila, this system will make slaves of the world population. Yeah. That's what it's going to be. Yan ang objective nila. Alipin po. Wala nang uh, sovereign nation states. Yan ang, yan ang plano po nila. So we have to stand and fight. And then here in the Philippines, our fight here for our theater here is Article 12. Because it is sovereign, it is it is it is a it is a manifestation, a tool. It is a it is a, a, a spirit, the spirit of our sovereign uh, nature of our sovereign republic is that that in times of emergency we can get those uh, private corporations, public, uh, whatever case may be, mm. right? And and because. The government, the sovereign government, is ab above any private entity. Ang gusto nila yung privado mas mataas sa gubat. So okay. that's what we have to fight. So now we'll read the messages. I think we have about uh, twelve. Well, the messages left. sent to us are not necessarily our uh, opinion, but uh, we reserve the right to read them to the public in the interest of freedom of speech. Okay. So, Mante Matias, good evening, Cabo, Chitas, at mga katipon. Ang dami daw tinamaan ng pandemic. <laughs> Break muna. <laughs> Bumalik daw, kaya dapat ibalik muli ang lockdown. Nagkakaisa sila, politika, oligarko, media, nagkakaisa sila kasama mga experts sa pambobola. Mga nadalubhasang manggagamot, mahusay, mabuti, at dapat tayong magpavaksin. Sarap pakinggan, mga malasakit sa mamamayan. Kung tanda pa nyo, nung wala pang COVID, lahat sila walang pakialam eh. 
nagkakamatay sa sakit at gutom mga kababayan natin hindi man di naman nila iniintindi tapos nagka-covid akala mo hero sila lahat na nagmamasakit sa tao yung mga frontliners hero raw may sahod yan man Matias you're you're uh, you're correct you're correct man uh, yun ang sinasabi natin eh it's a uh, ito mga to and, and yung only solution nila wala silang sinasabi about early treatment like hydroxychloroquine tsaka ivermectin in fact uh, tin, uh, ayaw nilang sabihin yon ang gusto lang nila sabihin lockdown tapos vaccine Angelo Redaha good evening Sir Butch Valdez Malolos Bulacan stay safe Sir Butch God bless na doktrina ng kademonyohan ng mga ulupong spirit of antichrist is rising Kaya ang mga believers at restrainers ay malapit ng umalis sa mundo. Rodolfo del Mundo Magdanggabe, RMN. Irene Or, uh, or Tuest, or Tuoste, watching from Tarla. Rudy Rabe, good evening po, Professor Valdez, watching from Caloocan. Alfredo Oredina, present. Our faith is not dependent specifically on one virus. Humans have different paths to go through. Not dictated. Dini dismantle ko ang oligarchs. Niyari ko sila, bola lang pala. Maso, kamo. <laughs> Arjay Veliana, mabuhay. Andrew Oti de la Cruz, bakit hindi kayo magsitakbo bilang presidente at sa kanyo gawin ang pagsasabi nyo? Ba't nyo sisisiyan ang presidente na hilo na sa daming problema sa bansa? Kayo, ano bang nagawa nyo sa bansa? Dumada? <laughs> Wilfredo Opiniano, <coughs> gandang gabi, mag-utol mag mga sir. Ayan, mag-utol na kami. <laughs> Mabuhay po kayo, kabuchka itos. CJ Laura, watching from Kaita Rizal. Shout out po yung, mga, yung mama ko na nasa Makati, binabantayan po yung lola ko. Na lockdown po ang mama ko na nasa Makati. Kuya itos, wala, wala po ba kayong kapatid? <laughs> Maraming kapatid si itos. <laughs> Uh, si ano yun, si Jay yeah, si, si, He's uh, 12 years old um, no? mm. And uh, Meron siyang mga pinapadalang ano, Mabuhay ang ating katipunan Nandiyan ba sa'yo? Ha? Parinig mo nga yung kay si Jay uh, He has to transfer it pa Has to transfer mo pa? Uh, mamaya kung manggawa mo uh, Sige. Carlo EY, good good evening. Boots San Pascual Camarillas. Mga thank you sa Sir Boots Sir Itos watching from Macau. Josie Velasquez, good evening Sir Boots and Sir Itos watching from Italy. Salamat na habot din sa live niyo. Yung presidente ng Tanzania ay namatay bigla siya ay against sa vaccines at sa kanila ay open. At sa kanila ay open dahil hindi siya naniniwala sa pandemic. So tingin niyo ano ang ibig sabihin nito? Depende po anong reason <laughs> ng kinamatay ng presidente ng Tanzania. Uh, no? Sa circumstances uh, surrounding. Yeah. Ang, ang sasabihin nila, COVID ba o na heart attack? Mm -hmm. Dahil baka naman may, may comorbidity na si presidente. Kasi whether or not there is COVID, marami pong namamatay. <laughs> no? Yeah. Yep. Um, so maganda po, tingnan natin. But yes, you're right, the president of Tanzania was saying nga na hindi siya naniniwala dito at sila and they take ivermectin yung mga african countries mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's an old it's a 40 or 50 year old drug mm -hmm. na panglaban sa ano uh, bulate anti malarial rin po yan so they've been taking it and sabi niya it's work japanese sagi good evening po sir Bush and sir Itos, handsome father and son blurred po kayo di po maga, maganda ang dating thanks Siguro sa ano yan, sa network yan. Josie Velasquez, baka sa network yan dahil sa South Abroad dito, sa akin, very clear. Correct. Rodovite Periabas, magandang gabi po katipunan. Mabuhi po kayo, bakit tumas ang bilang ng kaso ng COVID sa NCR? Dahil ba sa maraming Pilipino ang ayaw magpabakuna? Watching you always from Subic. Hindi yun, Roger. Rodovite, dahil sa DOH yan, kanya tumaas. Hindi dahil talagang tumaas. Akin pong palagay, minamanipulate nila itong mga datos nila. Okay, Evelyn Amura. Good evening, Sir Butch and Sir Itos. Gloria Rodriguez Siebert. Guten Abend, Sir Butch, Sir Itos. Always watching from Germany. Mabuhay po kayo. June Rodriguez, mga magkalasag anak nag-aasawahan. 
para hindi kumalat ang yaman, pare-pareho ng, ang takbo ng utak, galit sa maraming tao para makontrol nila. Sila rin ang kumukontrol ng ekonomiya. Ng economy, pero ang sabi sa Bible, be multiplied. Elizabeth de los Reyes Gutierrez, good evening ka Butch and ka Ito, salamat sa marami na ako'y natututunan sa inyo. Mula po noong nasa DZAR po kayo. Salamat po. Mabuhay oh, tayo. Tagal nun, Elizabeth. No? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Arok Ali, good evening po. Nawiwili na ang mga nasa gobyerno sa pamumwersa sa mga tao. Siguro hindi nila alam na punong-puno na mga may hirap na Pinoy. Sa panunod sa ginagawa nilang pandaraya. The President knows all the consequences of what he and his cabinet members are doing. If he's testing the patience of his countrymen, nako, it's his own lookout. Exactly. Cesar Velasco, good evening po, Kabuch and Itos. Evening, Cesar. William Laguno, ganda gabi po sa inyong dalawa, Sir Butch and Sir Itos. Mauubos ang agrilad natin pag nalagay Ha, pag naglagay ng naglagay ng mga solar panel, wala nang tatanim. Kung puro solar itatayo, mal- maliwanag na pin- panlilin lang sa atin yung mga green deal na yan at mga kabalgutom sa abutan natin. Panahon ng kademonyohan ang mga yari ngayon sa mundo. Kaya tangi si Lord ang pag-asa natin. Asan yung dating sakit burado na dahil sa fake COVID? Yun lang nga. Marisa Season, as usual, thanks for the special info. Virginia Malonso, good evening po, Sir Butch and Saritos, watching from Pasi. Um, uh, Raf XB, KDP, the only trusted source of information for the Filipinos. Watching from Rizal, mabuhay po. Following the prehistoric man who discovered fire for the first time, after some million years, they want us to go back to prehistoric time. An anti-population agenda. They don't come any dumber. Correct. Correct. Jose Cruz, good evening mga sir. Mukhang ginagoyo tayo niyang Amerikanong kongresistang yan. Kasi mukhang imposible yung pinagsasabi niya. Oo okay. nga. John Wick, good evening po mga host. Ano po ang topic? Ay. <laughs> May, you can watch the replay mamaya. Okay. Mayat Fuentes, watching from UAE. Angelo Solano, Mga idolohiya ng mga ulupong, lahat talaga gusto sirain. Healthcare, malapit na masira. Binakunahan mga doors, doctors, nurses, pati energy, gusto nila crisis. Ruben Franco, in our world now, common sense and logic is out, but rather leaders of the world now embrace the idea. Quote, nonsense makes more sense. What an idiotic mindset. Mm-hmm. COVID scamdemic, Ruben Franco, in our world. Gates ang araw san. They use wonderful words like sustainable. The question is, is that beneficial to the majority? Dahil ang carbon dioxide na galing sa pabrika ay kailangan ng kalikasan. Mm-hmm. Majotam sarap mabuhay. Mas the best pa rin ang nuclear power plant. Correct. Rain cloud, we have the world's biggest deuterium deposit in the Philippines. Deep. New technology can feasibly extract that in the future. Yes. Dennis Do, Domalaon. Hello po mga sir watching from UK, Cardiff. Mabuhay po kayo. Wilson Suarez, good evening sir Butch Saritos. Di ba kasama din sa mga Agenda 21 nagpapakalat ng fake virus sa mundo? Oo. Yep. That's exactly what they were preparing for. Uh, Dario Padilla, buenas noches senior Butch Saritos. <laughs> Mabuhay kayo at ang maso. Muchas gracias. Ipagpatuloy nyo ang pagpakikibaka at sana'y magtatagumpay tayo. Rose Bradford. Hello po. Ano ang subject nyo? <laughs> Marisa Buya. Very informative topic nyo, sir. Thank you. Watching here in Hong Kong. Marcos Antonov. Dami kong nalalaman ngayon. Zenea Arcilla. Good evening, sir. Bochonitos. Nakakahabol din watching from Hong Kong. Alex Lone Star. Tanga pala mga, mga PI. Putang, putang ina mga. <laughs> okay. okay. Siyempre kung saan compatible makakuha ng sustainable energy. Di ba depende sa lugar at panahon? Bakit yun lang ba ang resources? Ingat po sa information guys. Hmm. Is it talking to us? Yeah. <laughs> Mark Sienes, Sir. Ang nakakainis pati simbahan dinamay sa lockdown. Mali naman yan. Mas paniwala pa sa COVID uh, kaysa sa Diyos. Ano ba naman sila? Mga anak ng tinapa. Pasensya na po. Lapit na kasi Semana Santa. Tama. 
Roland Salvador, kalokohan pa talaga ang COVID niyan. Hirap lang nagpapagago ang pangulo natin. Hmm. Wally Busamante, good PM ko. Galit na galit po si Bill Gates sa araw. Kasi namamatay daw yung virus. Kaya gustong takpa ng araw. At isa po, saan kinukuha ng DOH ang mga figure? Ang dami naman po. Salamat po. I wanted to say about uh, the sunlight and vitamin D. Ha? Meron, meron graph hanapin ko. Ha? Pero may study na ginawa sila. Um... The exposure of concentrated uh, the, the the existence of concentrated vitamin D in your system uh, drastically reduces your chances of uh, getting COVID, COVID and any other disease, any other virus. So nakita po sa study na yun. So vitamin D talaga, which is the sun. Jordan Pringles, good evening mga sir, sa Philippine Statistics Authority site ang COVID ay 16th lang sa list ng delikadong sakit. Konting urong na lang pababa, wala na siya sa listahan. DOH site, 93% recovery rate sa COVID. Deception at its finest, na deadly at delikado daw ang COVID. Talagang pinag, pinaggagago nila mga tao. Correct. So that even 93%, I think, is higher. Nilalaro lang nila yung mga datos. Na it's really, it's really crazy. Javier Valdez, thank you, sir. Thank you, Butch and Ethos, for this eye-opener. Mabuhay kayo, God bless. Dinadalangin ko na sana dumami ang makarinig na topic na ito para mamulat ng mga Pilipino. Salamat, Butch and Ethos. Mabuhay tayo. Hmm. Beatriz Rom, uh, thumbs up. Cesar Velasco, tama lahat ang sinasabi niyo, sir Butch at sir Ethos. Randy Castillo, hello mga sir. Good evening sa London, sa Germany at ibang lugar ng Europe ay demonstration against lockdown. Means, uh, repower KDP. Hmm. Yep. Raj Almazor, ang vaksina hindi lunas para makabangon ng bansa sa kahirapan dinaranas ng mga kababayan natin may hirap. Nakagapos ang bansa sa kadena ng mga oligarko. Hmm. That is true. Uh, more, Carlos Natividad, nagtatangatangatangahan lang si Duterte. Paano hawak kasi sa leeg ng mga... Kasi siya sa leeg ng mga oligarko. Pati yan si Duque yung bakla. Johnny Diaz, here in Melbourne, we had five days lockdown and the Premier used the term circuit breaker due to outbreak of, crisis, of cases. It's definitely a global narrative with aim to control and enslave humanity. Yes, parang sa basketball, dinidribble lang nila yung bola. Hanggang maubos yung oras. Mm -hmm. Nestor Vargas, ang hindi ko maintindihan ay bakit tayo na na-lockdown at nagka-quarantine. Tapos tuturukan tayo ng COVID. Correct. Kasi pag nag-inder data, marami ang nagkaroon ng COVID. Pero marami din gumagaling kahit walang turok ng vaccine. Correct. Meaning may cure or treatment. Bakit gusto silang turukan ng COVID ng mga tao? That's right. Alam mo, Elbino, back to GCQ. Ano, ano naman sunod, Digong? <laughs> Nele Sistara, I watched po two rallies held in London and Germany against COVID and lockdowns last night. Live at YouTube. Interesting why it is no one in the country is holding the same. Thank you, Paul, for this learning. Good topic, Mr. Butch and Mr. Itos. Rain, rain. Kabuch, patayin din ang lahat ng oligarch sa Pilipinas. Yan ang nampapahirap sa Pilipino. Ang DOH... Pinapa, pinapa obliga. Pinapa obliga tayo na magmas sa loob ng bahay at dapat nakabukas ang mga bintana. Seriously, saan ang logic nito? Kulang na lang, wag nang huminga. Yan ang gusto nila. Moto jam sa lahat na mabuhay. Dating bilib ako ay Duterte, pero sa nangyayaring, sa nangyayaring ngayon ay hindi na po ang, uh, hindi na puro mura Puro. Puro, puro agmura lang buwisit. Wala na yata ang pag-asa ang Pilipinas. Meron pa. Japanese sake. Si PRRD po ay kaisa na ng mga oligarko. Sabi nga po ni PRRD sa speech niya, I want to dismantle. <laughs> Tol meaning kapatid o kaibigan, the oligarchs. <laughs> Oliver Lalikan. Good evening po from Palawan. Good evening. Uh, Maru Quintana, maybe you forgot Duterte is anti-population growth. Yes, I yes. know. Yep. Lito, Polintan, parang extortion lang style ni Duterte. Tatakutin at uh, pag, or, pagbigyan. Nabigyan. Pina si Ong Pin, nung nabenta ng fire sale, ang online gaming, binigyan ng license 
Ngayon, kasama si Dennis. Uy, ABS-CBN lang yata, pero hindi pa rin kinaya. Zenea Arcelia. Dahil yan sa Okta Research ng UP, kaya panay ang taas ng bilan ng COVID. Ito naman DOH, gong-gong. Mga buiset, panay ang pananakot. Lord Lescog, always good topic mga sir. I love you guys. And the Katipunan crew from Accra City, West Africa. Ingat kayo mga sir. Angel Fel Femelen, hindi kailangan bakuna na libre lahat ng mga Pilipino kundi bigyan ng libre vitamin D at vitamin C para maiwasan ang nagkakasakit sa COVID. Ito, nung February pa, March pa, ang sinasabi ni Chairman Butch, hmm. we, DOH should promote, <laughs> right. di ba? Increasing your immunity. Hmm. Nakuha na, ilagay niyo na ba yung kaya, no? Yeah. Hindi pa Bago po tayo magtapos, gusto ko lang pong parinig sa inyo yung isang pinadala sa akin ng isang bata. Ang ating katipunan! <laughs> Ulit. Ang ating katipunan! Ulit. Ang sabi niya po doon, mabuhay ang ating katipunan. Oo, oh, yun ang yun ang uh, niya. Sige. Yan yung po si CJ. Si, si <laughs> Salamat CJ. Tangalan po ng ating mga katipon dito sa ating katipunan at ang mga magagaling na staff ng DCXL Radio Mo Nationwide. Kami po ay pansamantalang nagpapaalam at nagpapasalamat na sinumahan nyo kami ngayon ang oras de peligro ng ating bayan at ng buong mundo dito po sa ating katipunan. Hanggang sa linggo po muli mga katipon, 7 to 9 p.m. Magandang magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat.